What's the significance of all of this? Well, to explain, we are joined tonight by Michael Novacek, the Provost of Science at the Museum of Natural History here in New York City. Welcome back. Nice to be here. What are the implications of this? What does it mean? There are really two dimensions of the implications. One, purely in terms of biology and evolution, the, the genes that we see, the gene map that's been created here, tells a very fascinating historical and evolutionary story about populations, where they once were, where they went to through migration, and so forth. In the other dimension, there are huge practical applications here of this kind of map because we can use it, at, we can use it as a starting point to resolve uh, questions about that are useful to medicine and pharmaceuticals and other other activities because you know if we we look for genetic risk factors in local populations and so forth these are important ways of making our medical diagnosis and treatment more sophisticated so this is saying something about us uh, socially but also saying something about us scientifically and medically to find out where you are you need a map and this is a map that gives us orientation for a lot of great scientific and applied questions and this sort of map is relevant to all of us, regardless of where you live today. It absolutely is, because uh, the study places this map of the genes, the genetic makeup of, of African populations, within the whole framework of humans worldwide. So, for example, it substantiates a lot of the work in paleontology and archaeology that says Africans or humans actually worldwide came from migratory populations that came out of Northeast Africa and moved into the Middle East. And there are connections, there were also investigations of African Americans showing the connections between African Americans and Western African populations as well. How was the information gathered? I presume they had to travel across the continent and, and sometimes into very difficult areas. One of the really striking things about this study is the massive effort it took. They've been collecting blood, this team has been collecting blood samples for over 10 years, not only in major population centers within Africa, but within uh, far-flung tribes in very isolated areas, using jeeps, trekking into the wilderness. It's been a real adventure. For them, and they've sampled intensively about 3,000 individuals, and I think more than 113 populations of Africans. Were there any real surprises? Anything that jumped out? Well, I think that actually the, the the research itself, in some ways, substantiates some of the other work that's been done based on other genes and fossils, showing, for example, the origins of other of of people outside of Africa from the Northeast on the continent. On the other hand, there are some very interesting patterns. For example, hunter-gatherers seem to be, today, the hunter-gatherer populations or cultures in Africa today seem to be fragments of a much larger population in the past, maybe some 35,000 years ago in western parts of Africa. Michael Novacek, thank you. Fascinating stuff. Glad to be here.